Hello and welcome to Dioscopy TV. European stock analyst Brian Whitmer is joining us to discuss the market. One of Elliott Wave International's leading analysts, Brian is also the editor of the European Financial Forecast and contributes to the European stock section of Global Markets Perspective. Brian, a healthy economy needs a strong dollar, but is the rising strength of the dollar going up too fast for the economy? Well, I wouldn't say that a strong dollar is, is required for a healthy economy uh, necessarily. In fact, the 08 crisis showed us really the opposite, that when every market was crashing, stocks, commodities, real estate, uh, even safe havens like gold and silver were crashing in 08, one of the few markets that was moving higher at the time was the dollar, right, was cash. And I, I think this observation is actually, again, very important right now. Uh, we call it the, the all the same market phenomenon. And the idea is that a lot of these typically unrelated markets are, are rising and falling together. We think it's, it's in response to the, the ebb and flow of liquidity and credit. But the dollar is, is one of the only markets that's moving counter cyclical. So you're right that the dollar is, is going up fast recently. I think, uh, I think that it indicates once again that liquidity is starting to dry up. And the implication then is that there's, there's trouble ahead for most asset markets. And as you mentioned, I think it also spells trouble uh, for the overall economy. Is the apparent strength of the dollar viewed as weakness of the euro? In essence, yes. The, the, the euro is yet another market that is trending together with risk assets generally. So I, I don't think the euro will be any kind of, of refuge for a weak economy like, say, the dollar or the franc will be. Um, in terms of, of wave analysis, which is our forecasting method, the sell-off that started in May of this year is part of another long-term decline for the euro. But euro sentiment right now is actually extremely negative. So I think some kind of snapback rally should begin soon. But one of the daily surveys uh, we follow shows that 95% of traders reported being bearish on the euro last week. And if we look at a 10-day average of that same survey, traders are the most bearish they've been in about four and a half years. So again, this is the kind of lopsided sentiment that points to at least a near-term low uh, the rally that develops, it, it should be counter trend. It, it'll be a fourth wave rally in, in terms of, of wave terminology, which really just means that the longer term trend is still down. As the Eurozone is on the cusp of potential deflation, is the weakening Euro part of the ECB stimulus effort to claw out of the downturn? Well, the, the ECB may or may not like to see a weaker Euro. I certainly don't have any inside knowledge there. What I do know is that the central bank's actions are certainly not driving the euro's recent weakness. And the reason I say that is because the euro has, has previously rallied in the face of stimulus. It was up 25% into May 2011, rallied again in July 2012. It, it's interesting, when the euro was rising, we heard over and over again that it was because of Mario Draghi, right? He promised to do whatever it took to save the eurozone. Of course, a, a declaration like that would make the euro rise. Well. Now the euro's falling, but you hear the same rationale. Mario Draghi, he's buying all this debt. We've got negative deposit rates, Litro loans. All of this money printing is making the euro fall. The point is that analysts are just taking the same fundamental cause, and then they're using it to rationalize a completely different market trend. Um, you know, my opinion is that markets are way more powerful than Mario Draghi. I think that deflation, as you mentioned, is a reality in Europe essentially because a decades-long credit expansion is now contracting. I, I think we're still in the very early stages of that contraction, and I think that deflation will be with us probably for many years to come, regardless of what Mario Draghi does. The UK has been divided for the past few months as Scotland vowed for independence. Although the nation ultimately chose to stay, what effect will it have on the pound? And could it weigh on the euro as well? Well, in the past, when we've had this kind of looming political event, all we really see is a period of increased volatility leading up to the event. That's what we've, what we've seen in the pound recently, volatility. Once we, once we get a resolution, everyone calms down, and the market really just goes back to tracing out the same patterns that it always does. So as a technical analyst, no, I, I don't think the vote will have any lasting impact on the pound or on the euro for that matter, whichever way the vote goes. That, that said, and, and given some of the economic problems we've been, we've been discussing, the pound is not where I want to be during a major credit contraction. I, I do like the pound slightly more than I like the euro, but I like francs and dollars best of all. The key is you want to be ahead of the crowd and, and 
during times of financial stress, at least over the past decade, people have moved their money into dollars and francs. I, I expect that trend to occur, to occur again, but, but actually on an even bigger scale than it has in the past. Thanks, Brian. Keep checking back for further analysis of the economy with Elliott Wave International and Dukaskopi TV.